afternoon everybody who's just joined we are just doing quick introductions if there's anyone else who would like to just say uh, you know what their name is where they're joining in from uh, whether they're a finance professional with a finance background or not as well as uh, you know what they're expecting to learn from today's webinar hi um, my name is iman hi iman uh, yes, I'm joining in from Dubai from Corporate Business Services. Uh, I'm in Client Relations Department, and uh, I would like to know more regarding the new uh, tax laws which will be implemented, but uh, focusing more on free zones, if free zones will be also applicable to this new tax laws. And what is the threshold that they have to reach? What if it's a new entity and they haven't reached, reached or they don't have any transactions? Absolutely. So you've come prepared with a lot of questions as well. Perfect, Iman. Thank you for that. Thank you. It's 12.03 now. I think we have about 45 participants and that's about the number of participants we expected. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with a quick introduction, but in the meantime, while I'm introducing myself, feel free to just uh, on the chat type out where you're joining from, maybe your LinkedIn profile so that you can, others can see who's joined in as well. And if you have uh, any expectations from today's webinar, please do paste it on the chat. Uh, so thanks everyone. Uh, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is a new age consulting firm. Um, and we work with innovative businesses to help them grow, or we help with more traditional businesses to help them become more innovative and then grow that innovative part of their business. Uh, we're really, really looking forward to today's webinar. Uh, great topic to discuss today, very, very topical uh, effects. All of us in the UAE, whether we're a small business, larger business, or um, uh, a multinational doing business here, uh, whether you're in a free zone or mainland, uh, we are all interested to know what's uh, going to happen with this change in taxation. Um, I have two of my colleagues from Compliance 360 joining me today uh, to share their expertise. Uh, I have Arafat, uh, and they will introduce themselves as well, but I have Arafat, who was my colleague at PwC many years back. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to learning from him today. And we have Imad, who's a tax expert himself, and of course, will introduce himself in a little bit more detail, but really, really looking forward to learning uh, from both of you. Um, that's it from me. Uh, just some quick house rules. Uh, keep yourself on mute, please, uh, during this uh, meeting. The reason we've made you all participants in the meeting is so that we keep it interactive. So feel free to ask your questions. So during the presentation, we will take questions as well. Um, and if you're comfortable keeping your video on, that will really help the speakers a lot because they can see uh, some of your reactions if you're comfortable with that. Um, and with that, I leave it to Arafat and Imad. Uh, looking forward, guys. Thanks so very much. Uh, thanks very much, Varun. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Arafat Umar Naviwala. I'm the managing partner of Compliance 360 uh, Consultant. Uh, we are a group of uh, companies based here in UAE, uh, and we are into audit, uh, VAT consultancy audit, uh, external audit, internal audit, risk management, and uh, tax consultancy as well. By profession, I'm a chartered accountant from ICAW and I'm also the ACC as well. Uh, well, my experience uh, is from the ENY, uh, Ernst & Young. I work uh, for PricewaterhouseCoopers as well. And I also served as a head of audit uh, in Union Properties, one of the local uh, companies here in Dubai. And I also serve certain uh, different positions in different organizations. So yeah, that's about myself. Now I will pass on to uh, Imad to introduce himself. Thank you very much, Varun, for your introduction. Uh, basically, I am from Pakistan. I work, uh, I am not a fully qualified, but I am a party qualified chartered accountant. And not a chartered accountant, I am a party qualified 
accountant and I am a tax consultant, already a member of Lahore Tax Bar Association. And I have uh, a license of a practicing uh, tax advisor also over there. I worked, I started work from Pakistan and I worked over there in a national and a multinational companies. And then I moved to Dubai in 2007. And I worked here around 14 years as a head of finance, as a finance manager in district cooling and the utility sector. And I have a lot of uh, experience over here in the implementation of the VAT. I also introduced the VAT in my company and uh, implement it. Then I did a lot of VAT impact assessments. And I, then after that, I joined compliance last year and worked with Arafat in ESR, UBO, and VAT impact assessments. And that's it. Thanks. Thanks very much, Imad. Uh, yeah. So, Varun, shall we move to the presentation? Absolutely, by all means. And all if right. you want to do the agenda slide, if if you're covering that, yeah, yeah. So let me let me uh, quickly uh, run through the agenda, and then I will pass on to Imad to go into the detail of each and every slide. So first of all, uh, I mean, introduction of the speaker is done. Then we will touch upon uh, the UAE federal tax law. We will uh, we will tell like how it was introduced and when it is going to be applicable. What is corporate tax uh, reasons for introducing the corporate tax in the UAE? What is the effective date and rate of the corporate tax? Then what are the corporate tax system which is going to be used in the UAE? Uh, which will all, uh, we will also uh, touch base on that as well. Then we will also discuss about the exemption as well. Uh, what are the exempted items which will, uh, I mean, which will be attracted in the UAE corporate tax. Then we will also discuss about taxation on individuals, taxation on non-residents, then treatment of free zones, tax groups, banking yeah. se sector specifically. Uh, and then what is the impact? What is the rate of the large multinational groups? What is transfer pricing rules? How, it, how they, they are going to be implemented? then economic substance regulation. Then we will also discuss about what is the way forward? What is the plan? What uh, our, our audience or our attendees, they need to focus on if they want to um, you know, do the streamline of their processes with the corporate taxation. We will also touch base on that as well. And lastly, we will also, uh, I mean, we will also tell you like how we can help you with those uh, requirements. So now I'm passing on to uh, Imad, just to start with uh, the detailed slides. Thanks, Arfad. Thank you very much, all the audience, for taking part in this webinar and giving their precious time to understand what are the impacts and of the corporate tax. UAE federal corporate tax. After introduction of the VAT in 200, 2018, the another toward the stability of the economy is the introduction of the corporate tax, which the UAE government is taking up. Ministry of Finance has announced the introduction of the corporate tax on 31st January of this year, 2022, which will be applicable on all the businesses who will operate within the jurisdiction of the UAE. All these businesses will be impacted and they have to comply with all the rules and regulations. These rules and regulations will be time by time introduced by the Ministry of Finance. However, so far the Ministry of Finance has not yet circulated the law, but high level details have been revealed through, re through press releases and the FAQs. I think so that in our opinion that the further information which the Ministry will reveal is expected to be released by the mid of 2022. Now we will move next to the effective date and the rate. What is the effective date and rate? The effective date of the corporate tax. Imad, we have a definition of corporate tax as well. If you can just high level discuss on that as well. Yeah, the corporate tax basically it's a direct tax on the income and the profits of the businesses. It will be levied on all the businesses who are earning the profits and from their uh, from their all the transactions and those businesses will be will 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 give the tax 
and this tax will be calculated on some different rates, different uh, uh, different given labs. Right. Here, the okay. Now, what is the reason of the introduction of the corporate tax in the UAE? The position of the UAE as a global financial center and international business hub, the UAE corporate tax regime will support investment and headquarter activities and ensure the free flow of capital, trade financing and the services. So that step taken by the UAE government is to introduce to the corporate tax over here in the UAE is to make the one, number one, to make the UAE position stable in front of all the other tax regimes and make it same as there are in the other countries the tax system is. Here, now, what is the effective date and what are the rates of the corporate tax in the UAE? The effective date of the corporate tax will be after on or on 1st June of 2023. So the first corporate tax return will be due for the submission on 1st of July, 2024. If some businesses, they have the other financial years or they have some other dates, which are after the 1st of June, 2023, the same impact will come on them. Yani, suppose if the date is the start of the business is 1st January. So the start date of the corporate tax will be 1st January 2024. And it will, the first corporate return will due on January 2025. This is the start of the due date. January 2025, they will be liable, they will be eligible to submit the return. But till now, there is nothing is being revealed that what will be the end date of submission of that return, whether it will be 28 days like in the web, whether it will be three months, whether it will be six months given, because all the companies after finishing their, after finishing their uh, effective, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's okay now. So Imad, actually just to, just to understand uh, it more clearly. So what you are trying to say is, so from 1st of June, 2023, it is going to be applicable on all the businesses. And if yes. the business, if the business financial year is going to be started after 1st of June, so they will be considered or that will be considered as a starting date for their text uh, applicability as well. If the business will be start after 1st June, 2023, so the applicability will be the same as any if it will be started from, if it is started from the September, so it will be applicable from September 2020. If it will be started from the 1st January 2024, mm -hmm. then the applicability will be from 1st January 2024 and it will right. go for the full year. It will not be like the six months or three months. All right. Very clear. Very clear. Okay. Yeah. Now we will move on. Sorry. Sorry. That means each company will have a, a different uh, due date for filing the return, isn't it? Yes, that's right. The each company will have it will it will follow it as per the financial year. And because effectively, the return is for one full year, not any broken. Date. Effectively, return is for the one full year, not the part 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 of the year. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, Thank you. who is this? Uh, may I know the name? Uh, this is Hari from Alrasomani Group. Hi. Hi. Yeah, uh, this is this is actually um, as you know that there is no law has yet come. So whatever we are you know interpreting from uh, from the FAQs and from the press release. So what Understood. we understand, I, I, I fully take uh, it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So what we understand so far is like this. So because law or the so, sorry the FAQs they are specifically saying is starting on or after first June. So for example, if your uh, uh, business year is starting from 1st of September, then your tax applicability is from 1st, 1st of September. Sure. Yeah. Understood. Thank you so much. Okay, now we will move on next. 
on the rate. It is very simple and straightforward, and I believe it's very lowest rate as compared to the other taxable countries. Nine percent, nine percent rate over and above of a limit of three hundred and seventy-five thousand dirham. Net, if if you if the net profit of a company is three, up to three three hundred and seventy-five thousand dirham or below, the tax rate will be zero. More. The three more than the three seventy five thousand dirham, then the tax rate will apply. We can uh, just for the comparison perspective, we are showing here the corporate tax rates of some international countries. Yeah, also, Imad, before you move on to, before you move on to the next slide, I just want to clarify one thing. So what you are trying to say is up to three seventy five k, the percentage is zero. Yes, it's it's not exempt. So it means that. The companies they have to register themselves and they have to submit the return as well with the zero percent. Yes, they, actually it is like this. Arfad, yes, you are right. The each and every company need to be registered and filing the return. Either it will be zero if their profit is up to three hundred and seventy-five thousand dirham, then it will be zero. If more than three seventy-five thousand dirham, suppose it is four hundred thousand dirham. Then they will deduct three seventy five thousand dirham, and on twenty five thousand dirham, they will uh, or fifty thousand dirham. Fifty five thousand dirham, they will pay at the rate of nine nine percent. Uh, we have some question from the Sanjay Sanjeev. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Imad. Uh, question good is afternoon. you're 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 saying two things. One is your slide says taxable income. Uh, but you are mentioning net profit. So we are talking on the net profit itself, right? Right, net profit, not the revenue. Okay. Like, right. likewise, okay. likewise the VAT, likewise the VAT. VAT is on the revenue. VAT is on the sales, right? But the corporate tax it will be on the net net profit or income. All right. Thank you. And the rate of the corporate tax will be nine percent. Here we are showing you some examples from the other countries like Australia. The tax is thirty percent. Canada it is nine percent to thirty one percent. China it is twenty five percent. Denmark twenty two to twenty five percent. France fifteen percent to twenty six point five percent. Germany is twenty nine point six five percent. Even the U USA has. Twenty-one percent. UK has twenty-nine, nineteen uh, percent. Switzerland seventeen point nine two percent. Singapore, Malaysia, Italy. Every country which are the which are the uh, you can say that the high uh, high high established and having the rich tax system, their tax rates are higher than the UAE. UA is introducing only up to nine percent. Here I can see uh, Humayo. He wants to ask something. Can you please unmute Humayo? Yes. Uh, my name is Humayun Bashir, and I'm uh, working. I'm from UK. Uh, actually, I would like to ask one thing. When I was reading, uh, you know, this uh, regulation, uh, there was a clause where it says uh, that tax would be applicable for domestic trade only. Uh, and if it's like a, a company which obviously doing commission or supplying services to worldwide, you know, and that income is not taxable in UAE, even the uh, offices in UAE and their the staff and everybody is in UAE. So that's if you can clarify that, I would really appreciate on that. Thanks. Thanks very much, Humayo. Actually, we are touching base on those topics in the next slides. So okay. it will definitely, definitely be covered. But right. if you still feel that if it is not covered, then we can take your question at the last. Okay. All right. Thank right. you. Thank you. Okay. Now here I will uh, uh, give the mic to Mr. Arafat and uh, the Thank corporate tax system. Thank you, Iman. Thank you very now. much. So I will I will discuss about the corporate tax system. So actually, there are different kind of tax, uh, corporate tax systems used in the world. Uh, citizenship based uh, uh, corporate tax system residence based system as well so we are expecting based on the faqs and uh, the press release so far ua will introduce the residence based tax regime 
So what it what it means? There are two main things. One is uh, if the business is the UAE resident uh, business, then they will tax the worldwide profit of the UAE tax resident. Then number two is UAE source business income of the non-residence business. So for example, if you have the company which is here and you have some subsidiaries uh, in, in some other part of the world, so whatever you are earning on that uh, income, it will be taxed over here because the CT regime of the UAE, it will consider you as a resident and then they will, they will charge tax on your foreign income as well. There are certain other rules which, uh, which will uh, come into the consideration as well and which will be clear in the law itself once we have the law in place, which will be like, what are the tax credits you will get? What, I mean, there are certain uh, questions which uh, can be answered once the law is, uh, is revealed or it's introduced. So there are two things, which is taxes the worldwide profit of the UAE resident businesses. And the number two is UAE source business income of the non-resident businesses. The next question is how you will determine the residency. So there are two things, either of these two conditions are met, then you can consider yourself or your business as a UAE resident businesses. The one first one is the place of incorporation or the registration, if you have uh, the company over here, if you have incorporation in the UAE, then you will be considered as a UAE businesses. Number two is place of effective management and control of the business. If you are having effective management and control, which is happening in here, and if you have some company outside the UAE, but it will be considered as the UAE resident uh, businesses. So the next one is uh, the exemption from the UAE tax regime. Uh, Arafat, so, if you don't mind, uh, just a couple of questions which are relevant to the previous slide. So I thought okay. better to address them right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the 375,000 Mahindra is asking, uh, it applies at an individual company level, right? So assuming group uh, consolidated tax return is allowed, does it also apply at the group level? or the individual company level uh, 75000 we will we will discuss this in okay the, perfect actually uh, we have a for, slide for group for, as well for but, where, uh, where, yeah yeah where, where, where we will discuss how the groups can be made and what will be the impact on those and based on the high level information so far uh, we are assuming and we are expecting that it will be uh, same for the group or for the group individual company it will be the same we have some question from the monica can you yeah yeah sure so you know arfa the question is is it and or or right so in the sense that is it place of incorporation registration or place of effective management and control of business or it has to be both both conditions have to be met either of one either or perfect I hope that answers your question, Monica. Yeah. And then Arafat, one more question, which I think is relevant now. Mm. Is there going to be a, a certain way from the authorities on how you will calculate taxable income and a way to do the adjustments to financial statement net profit from Kusala? Uh, that is a good question. Basically, all the people who are from the finance background, background they want to understand this, but till now, until the law doesn't reveal, we cannot say that which are the items which are admissible, which are the items which are not admissible, and what will be the calculation process. They have told that the net profit 375, but to reach to 375,000, what are the items which are admissible for the tax and what are the items which are not admissible for the tax, that information didn't yet came up. That information will come up with law. Very you, Imad. It, yeah. It's a very detailed answer of Imad, but if you ask me and if I if I can tell you the straight answer, high level basis. So, so far they are saying uh, the net profit based on your financial statements and your financial statement, they have to be made according to the IFRSS. So first of all, you need to have your accounts ready with the IFRSS based accounts should be ready and audited. And then you have to consider what are the deductible expenses 
and what are not the deductible expenses, then you can do the adjustment and uh, calculate the net profit accordingly. Okay, perfect. Right? This is another question, but we'll address that later. Free zone yeah. versus main plan. That's going so to be this is this is about the system. So um, I mean, let me tell you, there are three main systems which are uh, followed around the world. Residence-based system is a widely used system. And uh, I mean, now uh, most of the industrialized nations, they are using it. More than 130, uh, 130 countries, uh, they are using this residence-based system. There is another system, which is citizenship-based system, which is more on the personal income tax. But USA uh, is using that system. And there is another system, which is non-DOM tax system, which is uh, used in the UK uh, right now. And it's a combination of both citizenship and the residence. But overall, based on our assessment, uh, we are expecting that uh, UA will adopt the residence-based tax regime. Shall we move on to the next? Absolutely, yes. Right. So exemption from the UE corporate tax regime. So capital gain and the dividends are going to be exempt for the qualifying shareholding. Then the next question is, what is the qualifying shareholding? Again, we can tell you the high level understanding, but once the law is there, then we can, uh, we can see like what exactly the requirement is. But if you see uh, around the world, uh, uh, like in UK, Netherlands, uh, they are using the five to 10% of the shareholding uh, in order to, uh, you know, uh, in order to fulfill the requirement or the fulfill the definition of the qualifying shareholding. So there are different conditions. One is five to 10% of the shareholding you need to have. Then also retention period is 12 to 24 months. So once you have 12 to 24 months retention of that specific security, then you will be considered as a qualifying share holding. So if you have a qualifying share holding, then capital gains and dividends earned on that specific uh, security will be exempted. Then other thing is qualifying intra-group transactions and the restructurings, uh, they will be allowed as exemption as well. But again, you have to fulfill the certain condition and we are expecting that those conditions will be discussed in more detail when the law comes. Uh, third thing is right now, uh, extraction of the natural resources, uh, this specific sector, it is exempt from the UAE uh, corporate tax regime, but uh, there is another tax, which is the emirate level tax, which is currently imposed. So we are expecting that uh, it will it will be continued with the emirate level taxation system, and there won't be any uh, corporate UAE corporate tax on that specific sector. Then regarding the withholding tax, there is no withholding tax in the UAE corporate tax regime. So whatever the domestic and cross border payments of interest, dividends, other payments, they will not be uh, subject to withholding tax. Withholding tax is, uh, I'm sure like mostly from the finance background, they know it's a deduction at source. So whenever you make the payment, you have to make the deduction at source and you have to uh, take into consideration when you submit the return. Then the next thing is uh, the tax, foreign tax credits. I think Umayo asks about this. So foreign tax credits are available for the foreign payments. So they will be available foreign tax credits. Another thing is uh, foreign branch profit. If any of the UAE based business, if they do have a branch around the world, we are expecting that they will be exempt. Based on the information so far we have received, it will be exempt. Or if you are paying tax in that specific country, you can take the tax credit in your calculation. Any question on this? Yeah, Varun, shall we move? Yeah. Uh, I have a question, I think, from Homayo. Yes, uh, uh, you know, one thing is obviously uh, uh, income in international uh, subsidiary uh, being taxed, but there would be some operation which uh, obviously earn uh, as a branch, which is uh, there is no taxes, only ex expenses, and the income is uh, generated overseas for some reason, and they have a team of people like one or two where as a branch, uh, UAE company reimburse expenses. 
So profit or income of that branch will be treated as taxed or non-taxed, you know. So it will the tax of UAE will apply there in UAE because the income would be consolidated in UAE company. Yes. So what, what I mentioned and what we are expecting is the foreign branch profits or expenses, they will be, I mean, if their profit will not be considered as taxable in the UAE. But if there is For no profit and only income and expenses and it's consolidated directly into UAE, then obviously it will be taxed in UAE or it will be like, because there's no tax uh, in certain circumstances where obviously you earn commission income, you pay certain expenses, but the income directly consolidated in uh, without being taxed into a relevant uh, country and it can be consolidated in UAE. So will that be taxed in UAE? Or? It, will, it will be taxed. It will, it will be, be taxed. taxed. It will be taxed. Uh, if you go back to the residence-based uh, slide where mm -hmm. we discussed about if you have foreign income, yeah. then you it will be taxed because you are based in UAE and your business is UAE resident business. So from that perspective, if you are consolidating over here, it will be taxed. But if you have already taxed in that certain country, then it, you, you will get the tax credit. Okay. All right. Understood. Thank you. Right. So next one is uh, taxation on individuals. So there is a good news for the people who are living in UAE. So there is no tax on the individuals. As it name says, corporate taxation. So this tax is applied on the corporates only. So there is no tax on the individual. So let us uh, go into more details on certain categories. What are those categories which uh, individuals, because we have got so many queries from the people and they were quite confused with uh, the taxation. They, 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 they were thinking that there might be a tax on their individual income. So we just uh, uh, jot down all the possible incomes which individual could get. So first of all is the salary and other income. Uh, it is not taxable. Uh, investment in real estate. If any individual who is investing in real estate and if he's earning income from the real estate, it is not taxed. Then if any individual is doing some investment in any securities and if he's earning a dividend uh, capital gain, it is not taxable. And also there are some invest, uh, investments uh, possibilities for, for individuals like savings certificates, bank deposits. They are also not taxable as well. However, we have one exception over here for the freelance uh, business, because as per the law, if you are doing the freelance, you have to get the license from the authorities. And if you are getting the license, then you are subject to tax as well. So. I think it's it's very clear, and unless hey, we have any Arfad, uh, it is very clear. Any 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 profit which you need to take without establishing a business or without establishing a license, that will that will not be taxable. It will be exempt. Right. So now I again pass to Imad. If you can just uh, tell us about taxation on non-residents. So, uh, just one quick thing, Arafat and Amat. Uh, so, Sumita is asking: Is there a definition for place of effective management, or do you think we are, we are expecting we are expecting in more detail uh, in the law itself? But effective management is uh, the one which uh, who is making the strategic decisions. So, certain. I mean, so far it it's quite subjective. But we are expecting that once the law is there, then we can have more clarity on that. Very clear. Uh, do we still have a question from Hamayu? Yeah, I can see. No, no, I think I just, uh, I'm not untied it, sorry. Okay, sir. no problem. Okay. Yeah, Iman. Now, our next topic is taxation on the non-residents. Okay. Uh, if you, sorry, Imad, sorry to interrupt. There's a question on freelancers from Rohan. Uh, can a freelancer charge his salary as a tax deductible expense? Uh, uh, as we, as we discussed earlier, all these details, like what is deductible, what is not deductible, this will be covered in the law itself. Clear. As we discussed earlier also that the non-residents who are either the individuals or the foreign companies, 
non residents are the persons who are dealing or who are investing outside from the ua and are not in not in the ua either their presence through the any business or through any setup they are all will be considered as a non residents so all the non residents who are either the foreign companies or the individuals the ua will not impose any corporate tax or any withholding tax on whatsoever they need to invest or to make the loans to the ua businesses yani who or who otherwise they earn income which is not related to a trade or business conducted in the ua in an ongoing on or regular manners it means simply like before arfat explained that if nobody needs any license or any presence in the ua in the shape of a business or in an establishment ua will not deduct any tax on that income yani we assume that the ua corporate tax regime will only tax foreign companies and individuals that have permanent establishments in the ua that have their presence that have their shares that have their uh, uh, their their establishment in the ua that will only be taxed and all the all other than those all the non residents will not be taxed now the major concern of some of the people which is that how the free zones will be treated free zones companies which are within the scope of the corporate ua tax the answer is yes what they need to do is they need to register first of all everybody should understand over here that every company whether it is in a free zone it is on a mainland they need to register on the corporate tax for the corporate tax purposes they need to register themselves they they will get like we ever getting in the vat there was a trn there will be a tax number corporate tax number for each and every company whosoever has the establishment either a freelancer free zone mainland small big individuals even who has the license licenses small small shops if they have the licenses they need to register the answer is yes they are in the scope of the corporate tax they will register with themselves and they will submit a corporate tax return on the annual basis where it it is a taxable income they are earning a taxable income they are not earning a taxable income that's that is separate. but they have to submit the return right and imad at that point uh, i think i'll take a question from sayed do they need to submit a audit report to the fta at the end of the fiscal year uh this is not yet been clear this is not clear but do other a lot of other countries require it uh lot of other countries they require they they do the self assessment also all the companies they they don't go to the auditors and but they do their self assessment also but they submit the they submit some document which is a proof of the income which is a proof of a business income so it means that there will be some document that document will be audited that document will be not audited or or how it will be considered it is not yet been clear it will be clear with the law uh, but varun uh, answer to your question based on our experience so far uh, with vat and other regulations so what we what we have seen is like uh, initially uh, or we are expecting that the ue authorities they will be uh, lenient uh, at the initial phase at least for 2 to 3 years so they would they would uh, trust the businesses they would ask business to submit the return and you might need to just submit the management accounts not the audited accounts but if there is an audit uh, on your company then you need to have all the information or the audited accounts ready so as a good practice yes you should have all the audited accounts ready uh, because if there is any audit from the fta uh, then you have to ready and you have to show them all the required documentation yeah imad okay now the ua corporate tax that will continue to honor the 
corporate tax incentive with the whatsoever they have offered for the free zone free zone businesses that will comply with all the regulatory requirements and do not conduct business with the mainland if those are the free zone companies which are wholly a free zone companies and they will fulfill all those requirements that they are not doing any business with the mainland company on the mainland that they will be considered as a free land and the ue will keep on honoring what's a, what is the period of honoring that can be with from in the range between 5 to 50 years but it has not been mentioned till now that what is the time period of the tax holiday will be given for the free zones So, uh, Imad, it means that uh, the tax holiday is there. Uh, tax holiday so will be there, but hmm. it is not clear how much it will be. Whether it will be the same because, with we has hmm. promised. Because I have, uh, I have the different. understanding. I have the understanding that the different free zones they are having the different arrangements. Like some free zones, they have a tax holiday of five years or six years. Some have fifty years. So, what you are trying to say is, I mean, it will be honored. It will be if, honored in the same in the same capacity. All right. Now However, I think there's a very interesting point there, right? Because obviously there's always this gray area whether free zones can actually do business with the mainland or not. And obviously, you know, uh, a lot of I mean, most free zone companies do business with the mainland, uh, especially services companies, right? Um, so they will all come under this purview and uh, will have to uh, sort of pay taxes for their UE mainland business. And I think it will only become clearer later when the law comes out, like what part of their income is taxable and what isn't, right? Exactly. This information will exactly. come with the law that what is the taxable, what is not taxable, what is admissible, what is not admissible. This all information will come up with the law. And Varun, just adding to your point, actually, this is this is the point where businesses, they have to plan themselves. They have to place themselves based on their uh, businesses, business models. So, for example, if some businesses, if they are not doing any business with the mainland, which I know many of my clients, they, they are not doing any business with the mainland. So they are just receiving the shipment and sending it out from the UAE. So they are good, actually. They are good to go in the free zone. There won't be any tax on them. So you have to see, you have to look into your business model and you have to do your tax planning accordingly. Yeah. Absolutely. And at that yeah. point, I will say one quick thing, which is uh, for those of you, um, you know, who are attending this webinar today, we have an interesting offer for you at the end of this webinar, but we will send it to you uh, towards the end of this webinar, five minutes before the ending. Uh, we'll make an interesting offer to you as well. So I thought I'll mention that here. Yeah. Imad, uh, can you please... Now, uh, this is the, the text text group, which, was the, which was the question from, I think, Sosajeev or uh, somebody else. Uh, what will, whether the UAE will, we will, here are most of the companies, they are working in the groups. And we have already seen that with the introduction of the VAT, UAE, uh, Ministry of Finance allowed to make the groups and to submit the single return for all the group. And they have given them a single VAT number also for all the companies. So the UAE corporate tax regime will also allow the companies to form the tax groups for the corporate tax purposes. And if, if the group, group of the companies having common ownership, same same strategies will apply over here the common ownership the effective management the control over the management these all points will be taken care of over here while submitting the corporate tax return on a consolidated basis for the whole of the group based on the other countries tax regimes what is the common ownership definition that it fulfills around 95 percent to 100 percent but in the UAE, I think so. It will be they they will they are going to give a little bit of relief. It will be from seventy five percent to hundred percent. The detailed law and its highlight it will highlight all the areas of the certain conditions. What are the requirements? What how the group can be made? What what, what are the extractions? What 
how you want to create, how you can come into the group, how you can go out from the group. These all definitely will come with the law. But yes, the groups can be made and that group can do the transactions with one another. Those transactions will be considered for the corporate tax. Those transactions will be eliminated for the tax purposes. These all information will be there after once the right. Um, but the group can be made and one Imad, can be given. Yeah, Imad, uh, actually I've received uh, one uh, question on my personal chat. Uh, someone is asking like, is there any relationship between the VAT group and the tax group? That is good question. The same group, I think in, in our opinion, the same group which is in the VAT that will also be considered as a corporate tax group. There will be the same group which we are which you are doing for the VAT submission that we consider also as a corporate tax group. So it means that it is uh, is it possible that if you are having a VAT group but you are not having a corporate tax group? Uh, Arfa, this can uh, now cannot be cleared, but this can because the it is not yet been declared that it is a compulsion it's a compulsion or it is a mandate yep. that if you have a VAT group you should have a corporate tax group you're you're expecting that it will be the same like we are expecting that it should be the same it should be the same because okay. it is beneficial for the companies that they are giving one VAT return and they should be giving the one corporate tax return also but the but whether it is mandatory or it is not mandatory it is not yet been revealed all right All right. So next one is the uh, banking sector. Uh, so let me um, take part in, in this uh, presentation as well. So for banking sector, as we discuss about the natural resource exploration of the natural resource uh, sector earlier as well. So similarly for the banking sector, uh, currently there is emirate level taxation on certain foreign banks or the branch of the foreign banks. So, but uh, as per the FAQs and the uh, FAQs and the press release, uh, it is very clear that the banking sector will be subject to the UE corporate tax. Then uh, next uh, thing is the large multinational groups. Uh, it, this is also a very interesting topic. So what, uh, what, what is uh, mentioned in the uh, FAQs and the press release that uh, there will be different tax rate for large multinational groups. So first of all, you need to know that who is multinational. So the answer is the multinational corporation is a corporation that operates in its home country as well as in other countries through a foreign subsidiary branch or other form of presence or the registration. So merely earning income from the outside its home country without a foreign presence or registration would not make a business a multinational group. So it means that if you have the presence as a company in, in the foreign country, and that company is your subsidiary, uh, then it is considered as a multinational. Uh, then you, you fulfill the definition of the multinational. Then there is another question, which is who is the large multinationals? So first of all, you need to see whether you are multinational. If yes, then you have to see whether you're large multinational or not. Then the revenue uh, cap is there. If you're earning 750 million euro, or 3.15 billion dirham. If your revenue is reaching to that level or more than that level, then you can consider yourself as a large multinational. And this is based on the OECD inclusive framework, which talks about the base erosion profit shifting. So there are two models or the two um, options are, are there, which is pillar one and the pillar two. So we are expecting that the UAE corporate tax regime will adopt the pillar two of, uh, which is BAPS, uh, BAPS pillar two, they will adopt that. And then global minimum effective tax rate will be applied on the large multinationals. Any question? Then now we are moving to uh, the transfer pricing. 
so as you know like uh, if you have a multinational group or if you have common ownership uh, entities then there is a question of the trans transfer pricing will arise as well again the question is will transfer pricing rule be applicable to the ua the answer is yes it will be applicable and uh, we have got the clarification that uh, once the law is announced the transfer pricing rules and the guidelines will be there as well and everyone has to follow the transfer pricing guidelines as well and uh, the uacd regime will have transfer pricing rules and documentation documents in line with the oecd transfer pricing guidelines it will be in line with the oecd guidelines then the last so topic arafa a quick question there i know we're sort of almost out of time but a quick question yeah. So Sumita is asking, what about multinationals falling under pillar two but operating in a free zone? Which one will prevail? Definitely, but these is uh, will have the corporate tax. They will be they, because these companies are doing the business outside the free zone, so they will have the corporate tax impact. But if then you have to see and i think we'll get a more clarity once the law is there but then you have to see uh, the conditions if the multinational is operating in the free zone and if they are not doing any business in the mainland then they can continue uh, enjoying the tax holiday so they, then there won't be any impact on them but still uh, we we need to see the law and then we can uh, we can assess accordingly then okay. the last thing is the economic substance regulation which is here um, if you are the entity who are doing the relevant activities as per the esr regulation then you have to follow the esr if you see the objective of the esr is uh, if some companies who are doing or who are you know shifting the profits so that was a inclusive uh, framework of the oecd which requires all the entity uh, countries uh, all the entities in the, that specific uh, of the member countries they have to follow the esr so what we are expecting is uh, once the corporate taxation is there then those companies who are actually uh, following the esr regulation right now they won't be applicable on them actually because they are subject to the corporate tax but uh free free zones entities because they are enjoying the uh, tax holidays it will continue to uh, be applicable on them so next is the way forward what you can do and what you should do in order to make sure that you are complying with uh, all the requirements the first thing is uh the implementation plan so we have also mentioned the timeline just for the ease of the audience so in in you have to have a target in the first quarter of the 2022 you have to have a implementation plan you have to see like what exactly the implementation would be and how you would do the implementation then number 2 is the detailed analysis which you can do in the second quarter of the 2022 where you can see like what are the requirements uh, what you need to do what what are going to be changed in your current infrastructure then number 3 is the impact assessment in the third quarter why it is in third quarter because i would expect that by june uh, we will have the law in place so it's it's better to do the impact assessment once your law is already revealed but i know many companies are doing the impact assessment in second quarter as well but i personally feel that you have to do the impact assessment once the law is there so you will have a better clarity and understanding then number 4 is implementation of those changes um, you can do in the fourth quarter of 2022 and the last is uh, the post implementation and the continuous compliance which will be ongoing once you are registered then you have to make sure that you are complying with all the rules and regulation how compliance 360 consultant can help you we are here to help you with the comprehensive planning for the city of your organization including detailed analysis whatever we discussed earlier impact assessment implementation or post implementation guidance as well we'll make sure that you are ready to comply with corporate tax once it becomes effective and if you have any question uh, this is our email address so you can directly write us 
and our team, we have a dedicated team for the taxation. So we will get back to you. Over to you, Varun. Uh, thank you. Can I, uh, before you conclude, uh, thank you for the very good presentation. Uh, just, I don't know whether it's too early to ask this question. Is there any provision related to carry forward loss is known? Yes, it is there. You can okay. carry forward the losses in the next year. And even if you are a group, then you can carry forward the, or you can take the losses from the other group companies as well. Thank but you. in, in terms you, of the timelines, it is not clear. Uh, either it can you can carry forward for five years, seven years, eight years, whatever it is. So it will be clarified in the law. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brilliant. So look, we want to do two things before we open up for more questions, uh, if that's okay with everyone. Uh, one quick thing, if you can stop sharing your screen, Arafat, for a minute. Um, what I would like everyone to do is, Whoever's comfortable with this, please fix your hair, get on video so we can take a photo for social media. Important to fix your hair, of course, and then do that. If I can please ask everyone to do that, please. Whoever's comfortable with it, of course. I'll give everyone just about half a minute more before we do uh, sort of take the photo. And Kanika, you'll have to help me with the photo, of course. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna say one, two, three, tax. Okay, when I when I say one, two, one, three, two. tax. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Uh, one quick offer that we have to make, which Kanika will just type on the chat. Um, Arafat and Imad have very kindly uh, offered that anyone who's looking for a free consultation for how their organization can prepare for the impact assessment and their organization can uh, create an implementation plan. Uh, they're, very, uh, they're very happy to help you out. Uh, so all you need to do is fill up a short form, which Kanika has typed on the chat now. Uh, so please do, um, you know, fill up the form uh, if you're interested in a, about 45 minute, one hour free consultation on the implications for your organization with Imad and Arafat. Um, and of course, we're happy to stay for another two, three minutes to answer any specific questions, even five minutes if it takes. But everyone who wants to leave now, uh, you know, uh, we're done with the presentation uh, itself. Um, we will be sharing a recording of this uh, presentation with everyone who's attended as, a, as well as everyone who, um, you know, registered for the, uh, for the webinar. Um, any questions, we're still available. Any unanswered questions? Uh, there was one answer, unanswered question around, um, uh, you know, are there any exempted uh, areas, for example, real estate. Uh, let's just quickly answer that question um, for Humayun. Sorry, I didn't get you. Is there any trade type excluded, uh, example, real estate? No, 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 till now, Imam. no, nothing is excluded for the real estates. All the businesses are only those who are the extracting the natural resources. Those are out from the corporate tax and they will be like a path told already that they will be considered on the emirate based taxes. But uh, other than that, all the businesses are included. Sounds, sounds amazing. Super. If anyone else has any questions, feel free to you know, unmute yourself, talk it out. But thank you so much, everyone who's attended. Uh, Kanika has pasted the form again on the chat. So please do have a look at that. But thank you so much for your valuable time, everyone. And of course, Thank you, Arafat and Imad. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you very much. much. From the consolidate on for the for uh, uh, this presentation for arranging this.